Hi there. Today, let's talk about a new word. The word is polycrisis. P-O-L-Y-C-R-I-S-I-S. -I -I so I'll explain what that word means, but I also want to talk about some positive things that are going on in the world to lift our spirits, to make us all feel better. I think we might need that at the moment. And of course, you'll be getting some great English listening practice and be boosting your vocabulary on real world issues and events. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. And one favour I have to ask of you, if you're on Spotify, please share our podcast with other people. It's really easy to do this and it helps boost Adept English. And don't forget, if you want to improve your English understanding and your ability to speak English in a much more structured way, Activate Your Listening is waiting for you on our courses page at adeptenglish.com. And this is exactly what it will help you with. So polycrisis is a new word which I heard only just this week but apparently it's been around since 2022. It's not difficult to understand why this has become a word in English. Poly, P-O-L-Y, just means many or multiple when it's on the front of a word. And crisis, C-R-I-S-I-S, -I -I that's defined by the Cambridge English Dictionary as being an extremely difficult or dangerous point in a situation. That's a crisis. So you could say that we're currently in a period of polycrisis. There are so many crises going on in the world at the same time. So many issues and difficulties which confront us. And I sometimes talk about these in the Adept English podcast, especially when I cover news. I'll give you a quick list of the sorts of issues which are confronting us at the moment. So you can reflect on what a lot there are. There are natural disasters and extreme weather events that pose threat to life or take lives. There's global warming generally in terms of polar ice melt, increased wildfires and flood events. There were also earthquakes this year in Turkey, Morocco and Afghanistan. There's pollution and plastics in the sea. And there's our need to cut CO2 and that upcoming pain both financial and otherwise, of all the measures that we'll have to take to cut CO2 successfully. There's loss of biodiversity. There's the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're still counting the cost in many ways, but probably bigger than all of this at the moment in people's awareness, all the conflicts going on in the world. Of course, there's Russia and Ukraine, but now there's also what's going on in Israel and Gaza. There's the fleeing of Nagorno-Karabakh, anti-regime protests in Iran, problems in Yemen, Ethiopia, lots of places in the world where conflict has either broken out or could easily do so again. In fact, sometimes there's so many conflicts, it's hard to focus your attention. They compete for our attention. And inside of these war zones and where these natural disasters take place, people are suffering terribly. I don't know how organisations like the Red Cross or Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders, I don't know how they choose where to put their resources. There are so many people in need. There are so many people in need of humanitarian aid. That's A-I-D or help. That's just basic support to keep people alive, but that's what these organisations do. There's also large scale migration and the pain of this to individuals and sometimes the horrific reports of loss of life as people drown in boats when trying to migrate. More at home and in the developed countries, other things we worry about, artificial intelligence, AI, Will it take our jobs? Will it change the world of work? What skill set will I need? And so-called AI anxiety. There are also high interest rates, high fuel prices, food inflation, 
And the cost of living crisis, or COLC as it's known in the UK, everything's just more expensive and can we afford to live? And there's also so much employment discontent. Both doctors and train drivers still striking in the UK at the moment. So it's easy to think of ourselves as experiencing a poly crisis at the moment. So much bad news in the world all at once. But Andrew of Adept English suggested recently, why don't you do some more positive news stories instead? Give people something more encouraging to listen to. So I thought that was a good idea. I found some positive news stories to give to you, things that are much happier, much more positive going on in the world at the moment. Here they are. Number one, firstly, a nice gentle one. A musician and composer, that's C-O-M-P-O-S-E-R in the UK. That means someone who writes music, a composer. He spent a year recording birdsong along his local river. That's the River Neen in Northamptonshire in the UK. So this man's name is Nick Penny and I've included his video in the transcript. I really encourage you to listen to this. It's very short. It's a recording of birdsong and it reminds us how nature can repair us and that there are still beautiful things in the world. Just take a moment to listen and you may feel better. It's also good to know that there's still different birdsong and some biodiversity left in the UK. The birds on this recording are called a turtle dove, a skylark, a woodpecker, a chiff chaff, a tawny owl and a missile thrush. Number two, men's health news. Women in the UK and many other countries have routine checks for their most common cancer, breast cancer, that's C-A-N-C-E-R. And this saves many lives every year. But so far in the UK, men haven't had the same screening programme for their most common cancer, which is prostate cancer, P-R-O-S-T-A-T-E. Prostate cancer is a cancer which men tend to get with increasing age. And one in four black men will get prostate cancer. So this is a very serious health problem with no screening program. But in the UK recently, scientists trialled MRI for screening for prostate cancer, and it was very successful. So they now plan to set up a screening program. Currently, something called a PSA test is used, and it's very unreliable. It gives false positives and false negatives. And just to show how common this cancer is and why this MRI screening program is so badly needed, on the MRI trial, the actual test, they tested 308 men for prostate cancer between the ages of 50 and 75, and they found 48 men with the cancer. And 25 of these needed to have serious and immediate cancer treatment. 48 men, that's nearly 16% of them, actually had the cancer. Prostate cancer is slow growing and may not have many symptoms. Symptoms, S-Y-M-P-T-O-M-S, -M -M that's the sign that you've got the disease. How great that we have this breakthrough. And let's hope that screening program is set up soon in the UK and in other countries as well. Another positive health story, and one far wider reaching than the last one. Scientists at a research laboratory in Spain, run by GlaxoSmithKline, the pharmaceutical company, discovered a possible way of preventing malaria. Entirely by chance, they noticed that a group of mosquitoes that were being bred, created to test malaria drugs, had stopped carrying malaria. This led them to discover that a particular type of bacteria, that's B-A-C-T-E-R-I-A, -E which naturally occurs, can prevent mosquitoes transmitting malaria. Malaria, M-A-L-A-R-I-A, is a deadly disease, which of course comes from being bitten by mosquitoes. That's M-O-S-Q-U-I-T-O-E-S. -E and it's a problem in many parts of the world. It's estimated that 620,000 people die every year of the disease, many of them children under the age of five. 
apparently that's one child a minute, which is just an utter tragedy. So preventing malaria is a top priority in many countries. Apparently this bacteria called TC1, once it colonises the mosquito, it lasts the entire lifespan. So that mosquito cannot infect anyone. More trials are now taking place in Burkina Faso at a field research laboratory called Mosquitosphere. And they're testing to see how safe and effective this is in the real world. This bacteria could be a game changer in the fight against deadly malaria. Brilliant. Number four. Another malaria-related story. Recently, Belize in South America declared itself malaria-free. This was after a public health campaign against malaria, which used mosquito nets, insecticide, that substance is to kill insects, and investment in trained community health workers to help raise the issue and keep it in people's minds. So Belize has had no cases of malaria since 2019, and it's the third country in the world this year to be certified malaria-free after Azerbaijan and Tajikistan. The WHO, the World Health Organization, gives certificates to countries as being malaria-free once they can show there's been no cases for three years in their country. So great news for all three countries here. And just quickly, two other news stories, which I've covered before, actually, in various podcasts, but which I think are so positive for the future, they're worth mentioning again. Firstly, scientists recently made a breakthrough in understanding the disease Alzheimer's and other types of dementia. So this is scientists working in the UK's Dementia Research Institute at University College London or UCL and working with scientists at KU Leuven in Belgium. For years, scientists studying Alzheimer's knew that there was a buildup of proteins called amyloids and tau proteins in the brains of people who get dementia, that is. But they couldn't work out how this connected to the death of healthy brain cells, which is the main problem of the disease, of course. Recently, they discovered that a substance called MEG3 was responsible. This is produced by the amyloid and tau proteins, and this is what causes the death of the healthy brain cells. They also found if they used a drug which blocks MEG3, the death of the healthy brain cells didn't happen. Surely this research brings us closer to treatment and to cure for Alzheimer's and dementia. Good news for all of us, I think. And secondly, the need to electrify our transport because of global warming and pollution. I've talked many times about the problems of electric cars and in particular some of them to do with lithium batteries. Lithium's rare and expensive and there's problems with how it's mined as well. But the Chinese company CATL have recognised promising technology around sodium batteries, batteries that don't need lithium. Sodium is S-O-D-I-U-M and sodium is a mineral that is a thousand times more common in the world than lithium. That would make it much cheaper, but also it should be able to power car batteries for 300 to 400 miles. Much better. Sodium car batteries are, of course, still under development, but maybe this is the technology that we're all going to be using. So you can see there are some positive things happening in the world at the moment. Let me know if you'd like more positive news stories like these. They're not that difficult to find, even in this period of polycrisis. Don't forget to listen to this podcast a number of times to improve your vocabulary. It is an English lesson after all. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.